So let's go ahead and bring in House Ways and Means Committee member, New York Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. Congresswoman, it's great to have you. All of this aside, Governor Newsom is on his way to Washington, along with some of the other potential replacements for Joe Biden. Um, ultimately, do you think that there is going to be a switch? It seems like they have a limited window of time to be able to execute this within the next couple of weeks. I don't think they're going to have a chance to switch him out as much as they would like to. And I don't think they really care. They've got Biden there. They've got uh, plenty of people that are really running everything behind the scenes. You know, I have a theory that it could be President Obama, since he's the only president in American history, to stay in Washington and continue to amass a, a vast fortune uh, living off of what was his you know, presidency. And I also think that if they, if they can't replace Kamala Harris with they can't over step over Kamala Harris, as you point out, because She's next in line. But that's why I think Gavin Newsom is coming in and saying, oh, I'm 100 percent behind Joe Biden. And in the event that he's unable to serve and they advance Kamala Harris, he could be the vice presidential candidate mm. uh, on the ticket, which would be possible. But they also have a, another problem. They created this virtual voting and that's part of their whole campaign scheme to get the delegates at the convention. They really can't back out now because if they release the delegates, they risk losing delegates delegates to a third party, potentially uh, Dean Phillips or mm. even Marianne Williamson, who's out there being considered. So they can't allow that fractioning to happen. So I think they're going to stick with the team they have. It's either going to be Biden with Harris or Harris with or with maybe a, a Newsom at this point. Congresswoman, uh, don't worry, because Hunter Biden is there in the White House <laughs> with President Biden right now. Now, that kind of confuses me because I thought they always said, look, he's not part of this deal, so you can't go after him. That all of a sudden, when everything falls apart, Hunter's right there. What do you make of that? I mean, is he really speaking into what's going Is he kind of helping to run the show right now? Of course. You know, this is, again, oh, aren't we all shocked that Joe Biden can't stand up and do a debate at this point? Of course not. And we all know that Hunter Biden has been intimately involved with everything President Biden from the day he flew on Air Force Two to China to weeks later having a deal made. Now, with all the information that came from the whistleblowers, we know that Hunter Biden is deeply involved in this influence peddling issue. And but not for Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, uh, Jill Biden, the entire family wouldn't have the largesse and the money they have because of the influence peddling. So they have the most to lose. None of them want to lose the money train that Joe Biden creates, regardless of what his status is. Joe Biden's gone. None of them have that gravy train anymore. So I think that that's why you see Hunter so intimately involved. There's so much going on. All the entities he created, plus the charges against him, the gun charges are the, the least of his concerns. He's got federal tax evasion charges coming up that are going to be even worse, and, and, and not to mention the huge loan that he got from a California sugar daddy to the tune of $6 million, which he hasn't, from what we know, mm. uh, counted towards his income. And that can't be forgiven. We have imputed interest on that, which has got to be counted. There's just so much out there that I think he's got a lot to lose as well. I don't think Jill Biden or Kamala Harris are going to allow Joe Biden to be removed from the ticket. Mm. Mm. I want to go back to policy as well. That is still very top of mind for voters, and that is immigration, <laughs> uh, Congresswoman. I think it was interesting. Overnight, um, we got reports that the U.S. sent a plane of about 116 Chinese nationals back to China. It's one of the first flights that we haven't seen there in coordination with Beijing going back to 2018. What do you make of a still um, open border that is underway? Well, that's amazing that they're actually going to talk about policy at this point. But obviously, the border is a huge problem from a security perspective and also economically. The harm it's causing to Americans, uh, the dangers, the, the rapes and murders we've seen of young women and people across this country, which are totally tragic and shouldn't happen but for the open border, but also the financial cost to the American people. So, uh, I, and look, it's great that they're going to send some Chinese nationals back. I don't know what the reason is for them. They've got millions and millions more people they need mm. to send back to their country of origin, and they've got to shut down the cartels, who are really the ones profiting and making all the money off this open border and causing harm to the United States in every way. Mm. All of our money might as well be just transferred to the cartels with the way the Biden administration is operating. It's really just unjust, uh, impeachable to me, uh, in my opinion, on mm. this issue. Uh, it's really a tragedy. And nonetheless, Congresswoman, we will be celebrating July 4th and our independence tomorrow. Mm. We hope you have a good holiday. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Happy 4th.